Hello and welcome back, everybody. This is Alon Paul. So, uh, yeah, today's going to be an interesting day. We're going to go ahead and go back to our playthrough for just a little bit, for the instructional playthrough, which I want to get back to the instructional portion of that playthrough. Um, I did some things in between. I was wanting to do the expedition today. Um, I know that they're doing a redux on that. Um, apparently, uh, for two weeks at a time, they're going to do the expeditions from the beginning of the year. So four expeditions throughout the year. Uh, that we've done so far and they're going to do them in two week increments so everybody gets a chance to redo that expedition and get the awards re rewards from it so I'm going to go ahead and actually do the expeditions yet again um, I do have a couple favorites in there but we're going to go through them in order as they come out now I'm not sure where you folks are at but right now I'm on eastern time zone I'm at 8 o'clock in the morning and apparently it is not available yet um, even though it's supposed to go live today, today is the 24th of November. So if I go to play a game, just as I'm showing you right now, and yeah, my volume's turned up a little bit, so enjoy the audio in the background, and I go back to a new game, you say, be sure to check soon. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, I figured it'd be live by now. So maybe it starts at 9, 10, noon? Guess we'll find out. So what we're going to do for the time being is I'm going to go ahead and go back to our recorded playthrough. I'm going to go through this real quick. I did some things in between. Um, you can see that the total play time is much higher than it was when we uh, when we first started doing this, or when I ended last. The uh, the inventory was a problem. Uh, obviously, my exosuit inventory was an issue. I did not have enough. Uh, did have an, did not have enough inventory space to start saving everything. So I went through and I started upgrading the exosuit. I didn't go all the way. I upgraded the main slots cleaned it up a little bit also have a surprise so let's go in and I'll show you what I'm talking about here and we're gonna get as more instructional as we can here so I'm gonna go over how the exosuit gets upgraded I know you'd see me you've seen me do the drop pods but I never really explained them so we're gonna go through that real quick one more time and I'll uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about now just a heads up um, again it is the 24th it is 8 o'clock in the morning uh, live in a house full of people, nobody's working today or in school. So, um, there may be the occasional outburst of noise in the background, but we'll try to keep it quiet. Wish I had an office I could do, th do this in, but when you have a full family, you tend to have a little bit of an issue with everybody being quiet while you're doing recordings, and I can't ask them to be quiet all the time. That would just be rude. So... All right, here we are. So, you're seeing things are just a little bit different right now, okay? So this is that Paradise Moon I started out on, uh, that I've made a new base on. And remember, it was just the base computer. Well, I've made just a little bit of an itty base here, and you can see I have a landing platform as well. Nothing special in here. I have my portal, I have this, I have a battery which is depleted right now. I don't have any solar panels, I have nothing like that. I just have this little biofuel reactor, which I'm going to go ahead and dump some fuel into real quick. Uh, yeah, let's just do the condensed carbon for now. So, 50 hours of charge. I do have, you might have remembered me making this, a storage container that I got through the expedition. So I have stuff I've thrown in there. I'm not going to go into what I've got. Okay? Not important. Um, I have since discovered all the animals on the planet, finally. I've got... And I'll, let's go over the inventory. So you can see my exosuit. I have this area. It's not maxed out. Keep that in mind. But I have it filled out. Same thing with the cargo area in here. I don't have all the spots. You can get up to 120 spots in cargo and 60 in technology. I've only got 30 and 50. Okay. So, and it's reorganized. As you can see, I got everything in its appropriate spot that, that I wanted in. Um, running a little low on certain elements and things like that. Oxygen's been a tough thing to keep in, in stock because of all the things I had to build. So we'll go over. I have one more exosuit upgrade I can do right now. Um, the reason I was able to get it, as you might recall, is because this particular place that I had found in their trade terminal had exosuit upgrade charts up to 82 of them. So I was able to acquire them by purchasing them. And you can see I have a lot more units now. 
Um, so that was a thing. Same thing with the uh, nanites. I got a lot more nanites than I had before. Now I'm going to do something real quick. I think the uh, audio in the background is just a little bit loud. So let's go adjust that in our general options real quick. I'm going to bring the music down a little bit. Just a touch. Sound effects are up a little bit so you can hear things going on in the background. We'll see how that does. Yeah, you can hear him walking and everything like that, yeah. We might have to bring that down just a touch. Yeah, let's do that a little bit more. I'm looking at the volume, and it's 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 pretty high. I've had that at 15 for a long time, so music, let's just drop down to 13 for now and see how that does. Yeah, okay, that seems to be a little better. Flutter, 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 flutter. That's not my pet, that's just another random animal. Anyway, so like I said, I do have a surprise, so I did create a little bit of a mini base here, and here's the surprise. I found this on this planet. A new ship. I have the Voice of the Abyss. It is a, as you can see, a solar ship. Um, so let's take a look at that. It is an A-class. I did hold out for an S-class. I don't particularly care for the sails. I don't like the square ones as much. I like the half-moon-shaped ones. Those are really cool. So I might get another ship one of these days. But it has a, a decent amount of slots available. Um, I do have this upgraded. It's a technology supercharged slot. So I'm at 25,000 damage with uh, against uh, no shielded and 17 against shielded. Pretty good damage rates right there just by itself. Um, I do have an X-Class upgrade, which is not bad. It doesn't get all four of them, but it, it gives me a good amount of damage. Um, I do have shields, which I don't have on a technology upgraded spot. But they're pretty decent shields. You can see my shield strength at that 273. 300 is usually a pretty good spot to be at for any ship. Um, it gives you a good amount of uh, shield uh, protection. Um, hyperdrive range, as you can see, is only slightly higher. I only got one upgrade for that. Or I put it actually in a supercharged slot so I can get a little more distance out of that. Usually it's 100. So 178 ain't too shabby. I'll get upgrades, but I also need to upgrade the ship a little bit and make more room for stuff. Um, the great thing about the solar ship is the sail. The sail gives you more fuel efficiency on your pulse drive. It also gives you a boost. It gives you automatic recharging. That's important. So as this thing is dropping, it's at 100% right now as it drops, if you don't pulse for a little while, it'll actually build up on its own through solar travel, being out in the sun, basically. I do have this one upgrade, which adds some decent maneuverability and stuff like that, which is pretty good. You'll notice my launch thruster, nothing special going on, but I do have a couple S-Class upgrades. The S-Classes usually generally run around 20%, minus 20% launch cost and give you a 9% boost on launching. That's common. Uh, the X-Class upgrades you can get variable things, and sometimes you can get them up as high. I've seen them as high as 25% on the launch cost, so that's pretty good. It actually reduces it even more. So I should be able to do some pretty good uh, launching and unlaunching, as the case may be, you know, actually building up um, <clears throat> or keeping a lot of launch fuel in there. But in the event that I need it, um, I've also got some uranium for my launch fuel. I've got some pyrite and uh, tritium for my pulse drive. Got some shield batteries I got from fighting off a couple pirates. Ended up with a storm crystal by accident. So as soon as I can create a uh, special warp drive uh, unit, well, there you are. Um, but we'll worry about that later, and we'll show you that later. So, yeah, pretty decent ship. I really like the way it looks. Um, kind of sharp looking. I like the little wings on the sides. Those are pretty good. Um, but I always like the way these ships ran. It's just me. My multi-tool is the same multi-tool. I've added some upgrades to it. You can see I've got this. And why am I not using this slot? I'm looking for a pulse spitter upgrade that I can th throw there. Putting this there literally has no effect on damage. So see my damage potential is 49.23. That's pretty good. That's not bad, especially for a starter, especially in A-Class. If I take this and put it there, see, my damage potential doesn't even change. There's really no reason to keep it there. And I put it in either slot, it does make, doesn't make any difference. But this is a supercharged slot. This is a supercharged slot. So I'm actually getting pretty decent damage. The amplified cartridges, even if I put it there, you see, again, no difference. All it does is increase my clip size to 25. You know what, I'll keep it there for now, to be honest. But this doesn't seem to have any impact. You see, there's no glow around the outside of this. So there's no reason to keep it right next to it, so I can put it anywhere I want. I'll stick it over here for now, or maybe better yet, I'll just stick it down here. That way I can get some upgrades to my scanner. Uh, I do have my mining beam is upgraded pretty well. 
um, it enables me to get some of those other things that I've been trying to get, uh, things that I couldn't normally get in the past. It always required the higher mining beam. So I'm in good shape there. Terrain manipulator as usual. I got a voltaic amplifier. I want you to read this very carefully. It says a generalized, read that again, a generalized upgrade for all multi-tool weapon systems causing its projectiles to resonate dramatically upon impact with any appropriate electro electromagnetic field will significantly significantly increase the damage dealt to any organic and inorganic entities that are currently stunned so it require it, it gives you a stunning uh, ability and you notice it's 21 percent damage to stunned entities okay uh, unfortunately it's not fully active yet because I require basalt so I'm gonna do that first today I'm gonna go look for basalt and we're gonna find it together and that's one of the things we're gonna do to get this thing fully activated now it doesn't require anything to charge it it is automatic what it is is every one of your first shots when you first push down your mouse button or hit your attack button it will automatically send out a charged particle so as soon as that hits your target, it makes them jerk a little bit. So very good technology to have there. I've also got a geology cannon. Eh, I'm going back and forth about that. That requires unstable plasma to keep it charged. I've got a few in my inventory. We'll see. I might use it. I might not. So as we are here now, you notice that there's nothing going on. Paradise Planet. I have found all the animals and nobody attacks me. So we're in a good shape, but it's a moon. Um, in order to do the exosuit upgrade, I have to go to a different planet because I have completely and utterly used up every drop pod on this planet. So we're going to go elsewhere. Um, let's look for the basalt first and see what we can find. Now basalt is normally, it's, it's, if you think about the element itself, if you're a science nerd, um, Basalt is found usually in this system in usually uh, volcanic or very high atmosphere, uh, hot atmosphere planets. So anything with volcanoes on it, basically, is what it would boil down to. So let's go take a ride. I love this. I love the graphics of the, the armatures coming out like that. That's always really cool. And then the sails open up as you get out to space. I really like, like I said, the half moon ones, but hey, it's a pretty sharp looking ship, you know. Anyway, moving on. So let's pulse out just a little bit. <clears throat> that should be enough. Let's go to in-ship view. Now we're looking for planets. Now you notice in the center console here, it gives us center planets. So as we come up, you see your field, your vision is in the cone-shaped area. And you can look at a planet and discover what it is. Um, this is not a family guy planet. <laughs> okay, moving on. That is obviously not a hot planet. It's going to be an icy planet, it even says, even though it says I haven't scanned it yet. Just because I haven't landed that. There. So that's two. We're going to scan around. We have another planet right over here. Uh, that's a space anomaly. Uh, this is a paradise moon. That's where we came from. And this is a damp planet. I don't think there are any others here in this system. So, woe is me. What do we do? Okay, so we're going to come back here just a little bit. I want to find the basalt, so we're going to go to our escape key. We're going to go to the catalog and guide. And what are we looking for? We're looking for minerals. So we can look for building parts, recipes, you know, blah, 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 blah. Minerals is what we're looking for. Basalt is not among the more core minerals. It is an exotic mineral. So we look. Here's basalt. Now, if I select that, it says locate substance. If I select that, you see it's locating it. But doesn't really help me any right so let's go back to the escape and go back to our log and take a look at what it's telling us you can set it blah 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 miles to, add to, to look for the mission log so it's locating this for us so you can set this anytime but it's also telling you it's it's finding it on worlds that are in a volcanic environment typically found in large deposits you can locate it with the analysis visor, visor when you're on the planet that is so in order to find it if I do see real quick you know what I'm not going to find anything why? It says at the bottom right, in the galaxy map, search for base offered systems across the galaxy map with X while in the starship. We're not finding anything here. So, let's go to our galaxy map. And look what it's found. Sorry. It has to show us this first. Yep, we're not going there. Alright, so we're going to right-click and get out of this mode. 
but you'll notice that you remember what it looked like on a planet when you're looking at deposits on the planet there was that diamond shaped thing with the uh, four squares in it you'll notice that that is over here okay so it's finding it here but lo and behold what is that skeleton there well that skeleton is a pirate system now why is that interesting because there's another quest that I accidentally acquired that's starting the pirate quest run we're gonna try to ignore that we can do that later um, under a red sky it says we're gonna try to ignore that like I said now you notice that there's not much information in regards to the system that can question it. It's a Viking system, it's a pirate system, and it says that there's base salt there. If I hit the R button on my keyboard, it gives me more information, but I'm not getting any economy data, I'm not getting any conflict data, so I don't know what the system's really like. However, if I install an economy scanner or a conflict scanner on my ship in the technology area, I will be getting that information so you can look for high tier systems, uh, richer systems that you can acquire more parts from. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm going to try to ignore the signal echo because, again, that's another quest. So we'll select it and we're going to go there. Now we'll come back here in a little bit. One of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to land at the space station because every single time I land in a station, a st uh, a station. I go to a system, I try to acquire the space station I can always go back to. It's good to have a good supply of those space stations as you play the game. Because you can always jump to a system, you may not remember it, you can't, rena you can't rename the system itself in most cases. But you notice it says first contact. So no one has been here except me. I'm going to get out of third person mode for the time being. It says my space station is down there. There we go. Let's head over there. I don't want to get attacked right now. What a great weapon system, man. Uh, I hit the, sh hit the station by accident, but you don't have to worry about it. You can still land, and once you're in here, they will stop trying to chase you. So if you ever want to escape pirates, head for the space station. I could have taken them out, but those weren't pirates that were going to turn out to be interceptors from the uh, Sentinels. All right. So we're at the space station. We could just jump back in the ship, but you know what's also a smart move? Upgrade your exosuit when you're here. Always. So where are we going to put it? Uh, let's see. So we've got plenty of technology slots available, so I don't see any reason to keep going with that for the time being. But you'll notice that you can scale. You can scroll up and down now. Isn't that cool? So I'm going to go ahead and put it down here. 120000 it's costing me too. Oof, they get expensive after a while. Let's check the merchants while we're here and see what technologies they have. Uh, stay away from C and B. Try to stick with A cl uh, S class when you can. There's movement modules. That's good. Thermal protection. I've already got thermal protection, and we've got toxic protection. You notice I got 10,000 nanites. I'm going to go ahead and take one because I can have one of each. I've already got this one, so I'm not worried about it. I do want to see if I can get a better movement module upgrade. It's expensive, but it's worth getting. I'll try to install them in a second. Let's go over to the Starfighter guy. Nanite clusters, blah blah blah. Purchase. What do we got? Photon cannon. I'm not using positron module. If you like the shotgun style ones that you have to be much, much closer to the, to the other ships with, pretty good upgrade. But not going to be my cup of tea. And it doesn't look like they have an infra knife module that's in even A class at this point. So kind of hard to find. But we know what's here. We can come back another time if we ever decide to do so. I'll take a look at it. I don't think it's going to be worth my time. Yeah, C-Class. Got a lot of slots, so if you don't have a good weapon, not a bad one to get. But not for me. What do you have for us for upgrades, Mr. Merchant? You have Neutron Cannon and Plasma Launcher. Okay, which I'm not using either of. Um, if I do get a pulse spitter upgrade, I will grab it in a heartbeat. All right, let's install our upgrades. Uh, we're going to put the toxic protection in here, so that's going to go down here. You see, I have the thermal as far as uh, heat protection, and I've got cold protection. I'm also going to check this. Now, notice I'm upgraded pretty high. This guy is fantastic. I don't have him in the supercharged spot because what I was looking for is if you look at the bottom left, recharge rate for the jetpack. 
is really what I wanted here. Sprint recovery time, 69%. I got sprint recovery time, 49%, 54%. Sprint recovery is real, real quick. But I'm not getting anything as regarding my jetpack recharge, and that's what I've been looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and try to install it. Everything goes red because I'm overloaded. What does it give us? 210, sprint recovery 40, recharge rate is only 16%. But at least it's giving us a recharge rate. 2% jetpack tank, uh, tank is not bad. It's better than the 209, but my sprint recovery time is much, much lower. Sprint distance is also much, much lower. See, it's not even affected. The only other one would be worthwhile. Let's try moving this and see what its initial settings are. 208, 25 on recharge. This one is 16. So actually, the other one might be better. Sprint recovery 35, and you don't even have it on here. So, And I don't really particularly care for the initial boost. Who cares? I'm not really caring about that. So I'm going to put you back. We're going to go ahead and uninstall you, and we'll get some items out of it. So at least we get something. Oh, didn't work out that time. It's okay. It happens. There was a bunch of ships that came and went. Yeah, that's a pretty cool looking ship. Raging sleep, huh? Kind of sharp looking. Ooh, got a droid too. See the droid on the on the uh, on the wing there. Yeah. Little R2D2 style unit. Not to take it from Star Wars. Uh, got some Explorer class ships showing up. C class. What kind of economy is here? If you look down, it'll tell you metal processing, medium supply. So the economy comes in three tiers tier one, two, and three. This is a tier two. When it talks about medium supply, it's a tier two system. Alright, so let's get out. We're going to go look for our base salt now. Uh, undiscovered. That is an ash shrouded planet. That could be the one we're looking for. It could be the one we're looking for. There's another one down there, but it's behind. Let's get away from the space station a little bit. Let's look over here. It is lifeless, so there's no, definitely not going to be there. Over here. There's a lot of potential planets here. Toxic, obviously not it. Go all the way up here. Nah, it's a little too blue and green for my taste. I'm guessing it's just a nice planet. Grassy. Actually, that's almost considered a um, paradise planet, almost. Let's just go out to the side here. See if we can get the other planet to show up. Alright, that should be good enough. There she is. Ah, it's green. I bet you any. It's like fungal or something like that. Desolate cactus. Okay. So this has got to be it. So, let's go. Now, if there's volcanoes, we're in good shape. Let's get back out of the first person into third person. Yeah, look at that. You got the fiery atmosphere with fiery rocks and stuff like that. Now, watch. You're going to see volcanoes appear. I can already tell you this is the right planet. Is that? Eh. I don't have a landing pad. Anybody else? Do a little scan for some places to land. No. I'm not going to stay up here too, too long. See? Volcano. Any place that has volcanoes on it, that's what you're looking for. Why would people make a place here to, to live? No idea. But, you know, you find places like this and you think to yourself, there's, there's obviously... Um, some merit to the planet, there may be things on it that you require or need at some point or another. So it's not a bad idea to make a little base on there. But I think you can have up to, I want to say 30 bases, if I remember correctly. Maybe it's a lot higher. Uh, I know somebody mentioned it in the videos. You know who would know. It would be Zane. Zane from Zane's World, definitely. So, yeah, the volume out here, the sound effects is really, really loud. Alright, I'm not finding any place to land. We're just going to go ahead and land at this point. Let's bring it down. Before we get a storm. Hmm. See that rock there on the right? I bet you anything that's a storm crystal. Nope, it's not. So pure ferrite dihydrogen. So you want to scan. Very hot area. Primary elements. Look for something with secondaries like these. Dihydrogen again. Might as well get some animals while we're here. Find out how many they have. 
four, huh? And I bet you most of them are flying. There we go. Okay, three. Only one more creature, and I think we just found it. Ha! Alright, well that was easy. Alright, let's look around. We need to find the elements we're looking for. Secondary element is dihydrogen. There's a lot of dihydrogen here, and I'm getting a little upset. Notice I'm in the middle of a storm, too. That's all the fire everywhere. What has this got? Carbon. It's mostly going to be found in a rock. Carbon. I can't believe this. I literally cannot find it. Yeah, we'll scan you, too. Those are not scannable. I'll scan it anyway, just because. Let's check. Maybe they have deposits here? Uh, sodium. Copper. Let's go up here. Basalt tail. That would be nice. What do I have to do? Hold out a uh, cup and catch it? Little rock, what do we got? The hydrogen. Oh, you're killing me here, man. Primary element. Ferrite. I'm not saying I don't want ferrite, but there's got to be some basalt here. But over there. Sodium again. There's usually three elements per planet. Sodium. Oh, this is incredible. Alright, let's go out a little ways. Let's try to look at some other stuff. Primary, but I doubt it's going to have it. Alright. Yeah, I'll read it anyway. It's just carbon. Hmm. Alright, we're kind of getting screwed here. Basalt, please. Carbon. that one. Let's read the tree. I don't think it'll have anything in it except carbon. Well, I'll be. Usually, these rocks have it, but I think something got messed up here. Huh. Copper. Sodium. Sodium. What is happening here? Sodium. Oh, you know the sodium over there. Storm's over. Says this is unidentified, but it's just going to be carbon. Ferrite dust, pardon me. Little ball here. What do we got? Oxygen. Oh, well, that's nice. You're not helping me here, pal. Huh. So this should be the right planet, but unfortunately, I think they have glitched something. They've made secondary elements so random now that, unfortunately, they may have accidentally caused us problems. Okay. Oh, we got some batteries. We'll go ahead and use them. Also primary element. Okay, I'm not sure what to do here. Huh. I was hoping for... Alright, let's do... Let's do this. I'm gonna go back to... My ship. We're going to go blast off somewhere else. Let's land elsewhere real quick and see if we can find it someplace else. Something ain't right here. 
Yeah, launch thruster 84%. I'll go ahead and keep scanning while I'm here. This is really, really interesting. You'd think I could head for the volcano itself, but volcanoes can be dangerous if you stand too close to them. Their explosive nature uh, throws rocks and stuff like that. I've never had one damage me before, but I don't want to make a habit of being close to one in case it does damage. For all I know, I don't want to get killed. So, all right. I don't know what this is. We're just going to land there anyway. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a landing area. Let's just go ahead and land. For all I know, it's the one we came across when we first got here. Alright, taking a look around. So we scanned a lot of crap here. Uh, what do we got? Hold on. Pyrite. So that's the third element. So we don't have a basalt deposit here. So this would normally be the perfect planet to find things on. And in every planet I've ever discovered, it uh, when looking for basalt in the past, prior to the 4.0 update, they have always been the second element on a lot of these particular formations. All the... Uh, but it's not here. So, like I said, I am beginning to wonder whether they didn't mess something up when they did the update on these planets. Uh, let's see. I've already read those. That's just going to be ferrite. Yeah, that's a lovely one, huh? Wall of Flame. I think the first time I was playing the game and I ran across that, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, it's not so bad. It's just, you know, you got to watch out for the flaming parts that are on the ground. That's pretty much all you have to look for. It's when they start getting the tornadoes. When they start telling you, hey, you know, in the middle of a, of a weather event, they tell you of another weather event. That other weather event is, you know, everything's going to go to crap. <laughs> You're going to have these huge, huge... Uh, tornadoes flying around and blasting you up into the air to oblivion. So you see the temperature keeps going up. Now, when it reaches its peak, a little bit of a tidbit of information is that it means your jetpack is going to be more, on a, on a hot world, your jetpack is more um, uh, efficient. See? See flames? you got to watch out for those. I can't believe this. I literally am not finding any basalt. What is that? Sector navigation beacon. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know those showed up. That's pretty cool. Well, I think we have a goof here. Let me recharge real quick with some of that. So this is not the planet. Isn't that something? Let me just do something real quick with this weapon system I have now. curious. So I'm getting ferrite dust and oxygen and carbon. Okay. So I guess we're pretty much confirmed the fact that there is no basalt on this planet, even though there should be basalt on this planet.
very, very odd. Uh, I think we may have to go back to the space station and check their trade terminal. Okay, so we got some nice crystals out of this. I wasn't trying to do that. I'm going to put this in my regular inventory. Hmm, nice. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Alright, where are you? Let's go back to the space station and figure this out. See, I wanted to be done with it by now. I'm sorry, I like to be oriented right rather than having tried to orient my ship for me. Whoop, there we go. So that is a little bit disappointing, and none of the other planets in the system would have it. Unless basalt is being found on different worlds now. So I think we just learned something that might be a glitch. We may have to report this. Uh, trade terminal. I don't see any uh, travelers. Uh, nope. And nope. Could use some gold. I am going to grab that. Let's go ahead and sell off the... No, we don't need to sell that. Back to the ship, I think. Magna Gold. There we go. Eh, not bad. Okay. Look around. I don't see a traveler anywhere. So no more glyphs for me. Okay. So needless to say, this is very kind of disappointing. I want to check the other trade terminal here because they sometimes have a couple of oddball items. You know, things you don't find in the other trade terminal. Hey, we'll grab some nanites while we're here. There we go. Not bad. Uh, ferrite, cobalt, uh, dihydrogen, okay, uranium. Silver, platinum, copper. See, they got platinum as well. Okay. Alright. Nothing special, nothing I need. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and exit this place. And we're going to try to have to find another system here real fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Meh, I don't particularly care for those. Or those. I'm going to pause the video here as I exit, and I'll come back as soon as I find a system that has basalt in it. Which is, like I said, this is very disappointing. And you know what else? This is not a pirate system, as you might have noticed, because the space station would have proved it. So very interesting. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, I think we're back, and again, the noise is a bit loud. I'm going to go ahead and drop the volume down just a little bit further. There we go. Just because. I think we may have found it. Now, this is a magma planet that I found, but then I saw this one. If it'll show up. A basalt planet. Now, if I'm going to be looking for basalt, I would think that the planet I would need to go is the basalt planet. So... Now this is way the heck out there, so let's see how my pulse drive does. Now in the past it used to have it showing all the time, so you could look at your base at, at your uh, fuel engine, probably pulse engine active, it shows you the percentage. I'm still at 98% right now, even though I've been pulsing almost a thousand clicks. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, 3%, 1,000 clicks. That's how efficient this drive is. Other drives, I'd be down at least 10, 15% by now. So, very useful. So let's see if this basalt planet happens to have basalt on it. So notice it says copper, pyrite, and cobalt. Okay, so there's no deposits of basalt here. So I'm hoping that I don't have to go back to the magnum planet and look for it there. Right. I don't see any developments from up here. Eh, 
is that, but it's not really what I'm looking for. Hmm, looks like they do have volcanoes here, though. Let's go down over here. Yeah, there's no landing pad, but it is what it is. I may be muting off and on. I've got family members starting to wake up. All right. Tell me you got base salt. Carbon, of course. Why would I want anything else? Dihydrogen again. Oh my gosh. I wonder if they realize what they've done. Nine species on this planet. Oh, I never did the, uh... Please. Ah, oh, for the love of Pete. I don't believe this. I'm on a basalt planet and it doesn't have any basalt. Needless to say, I'm extremely disappointed. I think we're going to have to give up the search. Um, we're going to have to try to find basalt elsewhere, I suppose, and I'll have to just find it at another time. Sorry, I'm so quiet, but love to be talking right now, but uh, disappointment is reigning supreme. I don't even know what to say. Unbelievable. The, see, those items are supposed to have base salt. This with their secondary component in a system like this, and they're not. They don't have it. It's not the trees per se, it's just it's the elements, the rocks themselves that are supposed to have it. Meteor shower? Oh, okay, that's interesting. Okay. I'll be honest, I don't think uh, I've been on a planet with a meteor shower, but I've never actually had one show targets on the ground. Oh, well, look at that. Interesting. Basalt? Carbon. Ferrite and carbon. Yeah, because those go together, right? <sighs> Alright, where's my ship at? Okay, so bottom line here, I think we're going to give up on the search. Um, I'll have to report this, to say the least. come back another time. Alright, pausing again till we get back to the main system here, folks. So, we're back. Um, so it's been just about an hour's worth of recording here, and we have not found any basalt. It, I'm going to have to call this a failed video. Um, we're going to go ahead and post the video anyway, because 
Well, you're going to have to learn of the frustrations that can sometimes be involved with um, playing the game on occasion. And, uh, but, you know, keeping it cool. You know, when you run across problems like this, it's wise to report them. Um, that way, the game creators know that there's a problem. If you're not reporting it, they don't know the problem exists. Um, the more people that report it, the more they see this as being um, an issue and will start researching it and figuring out a way to fix it. So I expect there'll be a patch in our future in regards to this. Now, I'm just going to look for the planet. There it is. Let me just go over here. So I want to end at least on one note of what we're going to do. So we we're talking about upgrading your exosuit. So I'll come down to this planet. Now there's two ways you can do it. Either you can be in your ship and you can do the scan on a planet, uh, within a planet's atmosphere, or you can be on the ground. So I'm just going to do the ground-based version. So at least we have something to go on. Great, I'm going to end up, land on an angle here. New slant on life. Ah, I'm sorry, bad dad joke. Okay. So these new ones, the exosuit upgrade chart, you basically just select it, plot root, and it does the pull back, and it looks for a drop pod. The drop pods are almost always going to be far away, even though there could be one within 20 feet of where you're standing. So take off, we're gonna go up to the upper atmosphere, and we're going to pulse drive there. So we get that pause as we exit the atmosphere. That tells you that you're ready to go ahead and pulse drive. We're going to highlight it. And head there. All right. It's a very interesting terrain on this planet. These long, very tall spires that stick up. Makes it a little bit more difficult to get around. I've seen worse. I've seen some very mountainous terrains that were so tall that they literally went out almost into space. And it didn't quite land right again. Here we are. So this is your drop pod. Now, of course, as with most locations, they do always have a little bit of materials floating around. Well, I shouldn't say always, but almost always. Okay. Go ahead and claim it. There we go. Get my navigation data. Now, in order to repair this, it requires three elements. Antimatter, antimatter housing, sodium nitrate, 10 of it, and then one carbon nanotube. Now, I happen to have a couple carbon nanotubes from disassemble, disassembling uh, products, um, but antimatter housing I do not have. So, we go into my inventory here, and I'm going to make some antimatter housing, which requires 30 oxygen, 50 ferrite dust, which I happen to currently have in my inventory. I don't have a lot of oxygen because I've been using it all up. So now I got one of each of those and I do have some sodium nitrate. So we go in here, we repair all three, and it gives us the opportunity to put it anywhere we want. So I'm going to continue on this track. You see I've been to a couple of the systems. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on this track here. I'm going to upgrade my exosuit. Done. This unit is now dead and you can never be used again. Now, as you go around the planet and you keep using these um, charts, you're going to find every drop pod available. And then once you've repaired them all, the next time you use it, it may bring you to a drop pod that you've already used. So if it brings you to one of those and you come up here and nothing pops up, you've already used that drop pod, you're done. That means this planet can no longer support you in regards to getting more drop pods. So there's no reason to stay. So, that said, that's how you use a drop pod. Okay. 
So I think, uh, while I'd like to continue with the quest line today, I think we've reached about an hour's worth of recording time, so I'm going to go ahead and quit for now. Um, I'm going to come back and do a recording on the expeditions, and then we'll go ahead and... Uh, thanks, guys. Just kind of pop in right in my face like that. Great. Yep, lovely. Thanks. Let's get out of the way here. Oi. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going to go back to my colony. And we're going to call it. So again, at least it's a little bit of instruction this time in what we're able to accomplish. And, you know, again, reporting these issues is going to be very important. So as you run across them. This game has come a long way from where it used to be. Keep that in mind. So... And make sure I land on my landing pad. There we go. Alright. And we will see you in the next instructional video. But if you don't watch that, it will be most likely one of the expedition videos. And I look forward to talking to you all then. So, um, I won't be doing it live. I'm not set up for that yet. I do have, you know, camera and everything like that. But I don't have moderators that can work with me yet. So it would be um, very hard to keep a track of the chat group while I'm streaming. So I'll worry about that another time. So at this point, I'm going to leave you all uh, with the usual comments to always be kind um, and to always be truthful to oneself. So goodbye, and we'll see you in the next video.